The 2024 presidential election is still a ways off, but we are already seeing a lot of parallels to the 2016 election where you have two historically unpopular candidates facing off, which always ends up leading to the worst case scenario. So a new poll has just been released and it shows that most Americans are on the same page with regard to Donald Trump and Joe Biden. As Newsweek explains, a new poll has shown that a majority of Americans don't want either Joe Biden or Donald Trump to run as president in 2024. The poll conducted by YouGov with Yahoo was taken between June 10th and June 13th, 2022, and asked 1,541 people a series of questions. On the question regarding should former President Donald Trump run for president in 2024, 55% of people said no, while 31% of people said yes. When broken down into political affiliations, 80% of Democrats voted no, while 14% of Democrats voted yes. For Republicans, 25% voted no, while 58% voted yes. President Biden received an even more negative verdict from poll participants. When asked whether Biden should run again for president in 2024, 64% of people said no, while 21% said yes. When broken down into political affiliations, 36% of Democrats said no, while 43% of Democrats said yes. Of Republicans, 84% said that he should not run, while 10% said yes. Yeah. So what Joe Biden needs to understand is that people didn't vote for him in 2020 because they were enamored by him or so captivated by his message, whatever that was. They voted for him specifically because he's not Donald Trump. He's not Donald Trump. Now that worked for him in 2020, but can that work a second time? Likely not. Because here's the thing with the American electorate. See, we go back and forth. It's this pendulum to where they see how horrible Republicans are, and then they overwhelmingly vote for a Democrat. But then when they're reminded how Democrats also don't do anything, they tune out, they don't vote, Republicans win again. And once they're again reminded how terrible and frightening Republicans are, they overwhelmingly vote for a Democrat again. It's the same spiral that we're seeing, the same fucking cycle that is indeed tantamount to a death spiral. Because each time we go back and forth, the country circles the drain another time. So Biden needs to understand that if he cares about America, the best thing for this country that he could do would be to step down and let someone else run. Now, that's not to say that the Democratic Party has anyone who's exciting because they're just going to try to push another neoliberal down our throats. That's what the DNC will almost certainly do. But still, to just run the same person who has been a demonstrable failure would be mental. You're essentially giving Donald Trump the keys to the White House, and this time, I think it's reasonable to assume that he won't want to give up power once he gets it again. Now, Biden's net disapproval sits at 39.8%, and here's how he stacks up against his predecessors. For the most part, at the same time in their presidencies, he's comparatively more unpopular. Trump was also underwater, but he hovered at around 40% at the same time in his presidency. Obama was around 45%. Clinton was less popular than Obama, but his popularity steadily increased as was the case with Reagan, but overall Biden is in worse shape. Now, the most stunning part about this poll, before I read that to you, um, you've got to know about a different poll. So when it comes to Donald Trump, an ABC News Ipsos poll found that 58% of Americans want him prosecuted for his role in the January 6th insurrection. 58% of Americans think that someone who could very well become the next president again should be prosecuted. But yet, in spite of that, in spite of everything that we know about Donald Trump and the danger that he poses, here's what would happen if the 2024 election were held today and it was Biden versus Donald Trump. As Newsweek explains, when asked who they would vote for if Trump and Biden ran against each other in the 2024 election, the majority favored Trump. 42% of people said that they would vote for Donald Trump, while only 39% said they would vote for Joe Biden, and 20% said they were not sure. Okay, so most Americans do not want Joe Biden or Donald Trump to run for president again, but in the event they were to face each other once again, they would opt for Donald Trump. So this is kind of what we saw in 2016. Both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump were historically disliked, but people opted for Donald Trump. Because the difference between the Democratic Party's base and the Republican Party's base is that the Republican base always turns out, whereas the Democratic Party's base has to be excited. They have to be galvanized. Now, sometimes hate motivates them, right? Just voting against someone like Donald Trump motivates them, but not always. And not after 
they've had four years of a neoliberal president who hasn't done anything to drastically improve their lives. Um, but the thing about Biden is there's things that he can do if he wanted to become more popular. When he was first elected, he had a higher approval rating when people were getting monthly checks, the child tax credit, when people got COVID relief checks. But as time has gone on and he's done nothing for the American people, his popularity has steadily declined. So he should step down and not seek a second term if he actually cared about America. But if he wanted to remain in power and win, he has to deliver for the American people. Now, legislatively, maybe that's not possible because of Manchin and Cinema. But if he actually put up a fight, maybe the American people would view him differently. If he actually used his executive power to cancel student debt and decriminalize marijuana, maybe the American people would start to change their tune about Biden. But he's likely not going to do that. And the Democratic Party, like they previously did, they're going to see this iceberg dead ahead and sail right the fuck into it and not do a single thing to divert course. Because that's essentially what we've seen. That's what we've come to expect from the Democratic Party, right? They are effectively complicit in the rise of far-right extremism in this country because they do nothing to try to stop all of these arguments from landing. When Trump says it's immigrants or LGBTQ plus people who are responsible for the state of this country, well, if the Democratic Party aren't putting up an alternative message, a lot of people are going to be susceptible to whatever Trump is saying because it's an incorrect explanation, but it's an explanation nonetheless, right? So if they have a scapegoat, if they can blame immigrants for their low wages, then that's at least an answer, right? So Democrats, they've got to change, but the reason why they won't change is because this party has been corrupted by special interests and there's been opportunities in the past to change course with bernie sanders but what happened you have individuals like barack obama coming out of hiding to make phone calls and tell everyone to drop out and get behind joe biden so bernie doesn't win and the same was true in 2016 when the dnc did everything to sabotage bernie sanders campaign and that's not the only instance where obama has intervened to stop the Democratic Party from changing directions. In 2017, when there was a DNC chair race between Keith Ellison and Tom Perez, Obama made calls on Tom Perez's behalf to get people within the DNC to support Tom Perez because they don't want to change the direction of the party, even if the country is yearning for it. So because Democrats refuse to change and grow with time and embrace their younger base, more progressive base, well, this just paves the way for far-right extremists like Donald Trump to continue to win elections and do more damage to the country. So it's not necessarily surprising, but these polls really should put things into perspective, right? If you're a Democratic Party voter and you loyally vote in every single election, vote against the incumbents, find out who's running, who's a progressive and vote for them because the current status quo, the establishment of the Democratic Party, they're not just killing the party, they're killing the country because they are enabling Republicans by remaining so fucking unpopular. Do you enjoy watching independent news shows like The Humanist Report, The Rational National, and The Majority Report, but oftentimes YouTube doesn't deliver our videos to your subscription box? Well, I've got a solution for you. It's called the Opt Out app, available right now in the iOS App Store, coming soon to Android. Opt Out is an app made by and for progressives where they take all of the most popular independent news shows and they put them in one convenient location. You'll find all your favorites on there, like The Humanist Report, The Rational National, The Majority Report, and the app is updated multiple times per day, so your news feed is constantly up to date. If you enjoy watching independent media, this is the app to get. Download it today. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.